Tony. Share them with others. 
We pray today for the families and friends of those who have given their lives in service to our nation. May they be comforted in their sadness. May they be reassured in the sacrifice of their loved ones contributed to a worthy cause. May they be proud of those they have lost and trust in their ultimate fate into your gracious hands. Even as we remember those who have given their lives in the past, we also think of those whose lives are on the line today. Protect them, encourage them, and bring them home safely. God, peace, stir in the hearts of the leaders of all nations, and in all who are invited to further their cause. Change their hearts and minds. Give them a passion for peace. Bring an end to the pain, suffering, injustice, and violence in our world. We know, dear Lord, that ultimate peace will not come until your kingdom is here in all of its fullness. Nevertheless, we pray for a taste of the future so that fewer and fewer men and women will have to risk and sacrifice their lives. We long for the day when people will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. May your kingdom come, Lord, and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Brian. Uh, we have a collection now by the Quaybon Highlanders. Devotion 
today is he is going to uh, have a ceremony in memory of all of our veterans that we lost this year from work here. Thank you. William F. Fitzgeorge, Army, Vietnam. Albert F. Johnson, Army. Nobody knew you. I'd be enough that time. I'll holler a little louder. How's that? Can you hear me now? <laughs> Philip H. Hurst, Army, Vietnam. Richard F. Holbrook, Army. James W. Allen, Navy. Thank you all for coming together as a community today to honor our fallen service members and their families. At this time, fewer families are touched directly by the cost of preserving our freedom and our security. The numbers do not tell the story of the individual sacrifice. Every father, mother, sister, brother lost is a whole world for their family. By taking the time today to pause and acknowledge their loss, you let the family and friends of those who have paid in full measure know that they served a grateful nation. Today we come together to honor their sacrifice as a larger community. Let us all carry that thanks forward throughout the year and honor all that they have given. If you would please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Dear Lord, on this Memorial Day, we pause to reflect upon our blessings as a nation and the high cost of those blessings. We offer our prayers of gratitude and thanks. Thank you for the freedom we enjoy in this country, for opportunities to flourish, and for the security of our land. Thank you for those who have served in the armed forces of our country, risking their lives for our liberty. And thank you for those who have given their lives in service to this country, sacrificing in such a costly way for the sake of others. Thank you for those who have given their lives so that those who live in other countries might experience freedom from tyranny. And thank you for a day set apart, not just for celebration, but also for solemn remembrance as we consider the sacrifices of so many in our military. O oh Lord, may we be more aware of just how blessed we are as a nation. May we be more grateful for our blessings 
more faithful, more faithful in stewarding them, more eager to share them with others. We pray today for the families and friends of those who have given their lives in service to our nation. May they be comforted in their sadness. May they be reassured that the sacrifice of their loved ones contributed to a worthy cause. May they be proud of those they have lost and trusting their ultimate fate into your gracious hands. Even as we remember those who have given their lives in the past, we also think of those whose lives are on the line today. Protect them, encourage them, and bring them home safely. God of peace, stir in the hearts of the leaders of all nations and in all who would use violence to further their cause. Change their hearts and minds. Give them a passion for peace and bring an end to the pain, suffering, injustice, and violence in our world. We know, dear Lord, that ultimate peace will not come until your kingdom is here in all of its fullness. Nevertheless, we pray for a taste of the future so that fewer and fewer men and women will have to risk and sacrifice their lives. We long for the day when people will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. May your kingdom come, Lord, and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. We will now have a selection by the Quaybog Highlanders. I'd like to invite up Michael Tambury to do the Gettysburg Address. <clears throat> Gettysburg Address, Abraham Lincoln, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, November 19th, 1863. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation from the sea of liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated and long as you are. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. 
The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here, dedicated to the great task remaining before us. Now from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom in the government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. We will now have a selection by Jan's marching band.
next we will be joined by Madison Frick for In Flanders Fields. In Flanders Fields by Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, medical doctor, 1872 to 1918, Canadian Army. In Flanders Fields the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place and in the sky the lark still bravely sing fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below, we are the dead short days ago. We lived, felt on, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high, if ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, the poppies grow in Flanders Fields. She will be followed by a selection from the Quaybog Highlanders. The next course will be to salute the dead and in memory of the service members that we've lost in the last year. So in memoriam of William F. Brisboy, United States Army, Vietnam, Albert F. Johnson, Army, World War II, Philip H. Purse, Army, Vietnam, Charles E. Garrison, Jr., Army, Richard F. Halbrook, Army. James W. Allen, Navy. This will be followed by our firing detail and then Jan's marching band playing taps.
I want to thank you all for joining us today, for all of the groups that made it out in order to uh, observe this Memorial Day. And please thank you for being part of the community.